today's video, I will be discussing a study conducted by Loftus and Palmer in 1974 that investigated whether questioning techniques influence eyewitness testimony. Eyewitness testimony is a form of evidence used in court systems. It relies on the memory of the eyewitness or the person who saw an event. And until Elizabeth Loftus and colleagues started considering the reliability of memory, the court system assumed that the memory of eyewitnesses was highly accurate. This research is based upon Barlett's schema theory, which suggests that memory can be influenced by the previous knowledge of a person. For example, if I see something flying through the air, which is blue and quite small, but I can't quite see what it is, and then someone asks me what I saw, I might reply it was a blue bird. In this example, I don't know exactly what I saw, but I used my previous knowledge to make a guess about what I saw. This is the idea that Loftus and Palmer's research was based on, that our previous knowledge influences our memory. In the previous example about the blue bird, there was an interpretation of the information of the blue flying thing, and it was recorded in memory as a blue bird. This example served to demonstrate some of the ways in which memory operates, by constructing and reconstructing information based on what was observed and the previous information which we hold. Psychologist Elizabeth Loftus has been particularly concerned with how subsequent information can affect an eyewitness account of an event. Her main focus has been on the influence of misleading information in terms of both visual imagery and wording of questions in relation to eyewitness testimony. Loftus's findings seem to indicate that memory for an event that has been witnessed is highly flexible. If someone is exposed to new information during the interval between witnessing the event and recalling it, this new information may have marked effects on what they recall. The original memory can be modified, changed, or supplemented. The fact that eyewitness testimony can be unreliable and influenced by leading questions is illustrated by the classic psychology study by Loftus and Palmer, the reconstruction of automobile destruction. The aim of the experiment was to test their hypothesis that language used in eyewitness testimony can alter memory. Thus, they aim to show that leading questions could distort eyewitness testimony accounts as the account would become distorted by cues provided in questions. To test this, Loftus and Palmer, 1974, asked people to estimate the speed of motor vehicles using different forms of questions. Estimating vehicle speed is something people are generally poor at and so they may be more open to suggestion. For their first experiment, they recruited 45 students, which formed an opportunity sample. This was a laboratory experiment with five conditions, only one of which was experienced by each participant, an independent measures experimental design. Seven forms of traffic accidents rate ranging in duration from 5 to 30 seconds were presented in a random order to each group. After watching the film, participants were asked to describe what had happened as if they were eyewitnesses. They were then asked about the speed of the vehicles during the traffic accident, and the question was posed using five different verbs that had different levels of intensity. Smashed, collided, bumped, hit, or contacted. Each group was presented with this question using one of the verbs above. So after running the first experiment, they found that the estimated speed was affected by the verb that was used. The verb implied information about the speed, which systematically affected the participants' memory of the accident. Participants who were asked the question using the verb smashed thought that the cars were going faster than those who were asked the hit question. The participants in the smashed condition reported the highest speed estimate, 40.8 miles per hour, followed by collided with 39.3 miles per hour, bumped with 38.1 miles per hour, hit with 34 miles per hour, and contacted with 31.8 miles per hour. So the results of the first experiment show that the verb conveyed an impression of the speed the car was traveling at, was traveling at and this altered the participants' perceptions. 
In other words, eyewitness testimony might be biased by the way that questions are asked after a crime is committed. Loftus Palmer offered two possible explanations for these results. First, they consider the response bias factors. The misleading information provided may have simply influenced the answer a person gave, a response bias, but didn't actually lead to a false memory of the event. For example, the different speed estimates occur because the critical word, such as smash or hit, influences or biases a person's response. Secondly, they posed that memory representation was altered. The critical verb changes a person's perception of the accident. Some critical words would lead someone to have a perception of the accident being more serious. This perception is then stored in a person's memory of the event. If the second explanation is true, we would expect participants to remember other details that are not true. Loftus and Palmer tested this in their second experiment. For their second experiment, Loftus and Palmer had 150 students who were shown a one-minute film which featured a car drive driving through the countryside followed by four seconds of multiple traffic accident. Afterwards, the students were questioned about the fault. The independent variable was the type of question asked. It was manipulated by asking 50 students how fast were the cars going when they hit each other, another 50 how fast were the cars going when they smashed each other, and the remaining 50 participants were not asked the question at all, i.e. they were the control group. One week later, the dependent variable was measured without seeing the film again. The students answered 10 questions, one of which was a critical one, randomly placed in the list. Did you see any broken glass? There was no broken glass on the original film. The conclusion they reached from the first experiment was that participants who were asked how fast the cars were going when they smashed were more likely to report seeing broken glass. This suggests that memory is easily distorted by questioning techniques and information acquired after the event can merge with original memory, causing inaccurate recall or reconstructive memory. The results from experiment 2 suggest that this effect is not just due to response bias, because leading questions actually alter the memory a participant had after the event. The addition of false details to a memory of an event is referred to as confabulation. This has important implications for the questions used in police interviews of eyewitnesses. One limitation of the research is that it lacked mundane realism or ecological validity. Participants viewed video clips rather than being present at a real-life accident. As the video clip does not have the same emotional impact as witnessing a real-life accident, the participants would be less likely to pay attention and less motivated to be accurate in their judgments. A study conducted by Yuo and Katsho in 1986 had findings that conflicted with the study. They found that misleading information did not alter the memory of people who had witnessed a real armed robbery. This implies that misleading information may have a greater influence in the lab, and that Loftus and Palmer's study may have lacked ecological validity. A further problem with the study was the use of students as participants. Students are not representative of the general population in a number of ways. Importantly, they may be less experienced drivers and therefore less confident in their ability to estimate speed. This may have influenced them to be more swayed by the verb in the question. The strength of the study is that it's easy to replicate. This is because the method was a laboratory experiment which followed a standardized procedure. That was it for today's videos, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe for more videos like this one and also check out the poll that's on our channel to vote for what our next video should be on. Thanks for watching.